I've been using Kittle more and more to create my print-on-demand designs, and in this video, we're going to take a look at using Kittle to create a christmas theme design for fourth quarter that we can use on multiple products. Hey everybody, Jeff here for POD Insights, the YouTube channel and podcast. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you can be notified when future POD Insights videos come out and check out the description. There are links to a lot of helpful resources, including the website podinsights.net. Since I've been using Kittle more and more to make my print-on-demand designs, I thought it'd be interesting to take a look at how I create a print-on-demand design to use on multiple products using one of Kittle's templates and making adjustments to it. Now, I don't always use a template on Kittle. Sometimes I make designs from scratch. Sometimes I import my own graphics that I've downloaded in the past. Sometimes I import my own fonts. And I did a video recently about how to upload your own graphics if you can't find exactly what you want in Kittle, but you want to use their editing features. There is a link in the upper corner as well as in the description to that video if you want to check that out. So let's say I stumbled across this design idea as I was researching my Christmas theme designs for fourth quarter. And I also thought this one was kind of funny and unique, so I thought it would be a good example. So the phrase is Mooey Christmas Shirt. So instead of Merry Christmas, it's Mooey Christmas. So it's you're going to be a cow in the graphic, of course. And Sales Samurai is indicating about 400 monthly searches now. That definitely could increase over the next couple months because it's not Halloween yet. It's not Thanksgiving yet. So you can see one of the popular elements here is a cow wearing a Santa hat. Some are more cartoonish than others. Some are more like a real graphic of a cow. But I like the idea of the cow wearing a Santa hat. I just want to try and make a unique style of design that I don't see here. And Kittle's templates are a great way to get inspiration for something just like that. When you've identified a niche that you want to try and enter and create a couple of designs for, so just looking at some different styles going through the templates that are available on Kittle can be a great source of inspiration because it can help you picture what your design might look like. Of course, you can use any template out there and then make it fit the design that you want, or you can start from scratch. But in this case, with this type of a design being Christmas-themed, it'd be nice if it already had some kind of holiday, Christmas, or even just winter-themed elements elements in it so I don't have to do everything. And I kind of like this one here that looks like a stamp because it's got that kind of badge style. It lends itself to having a graphic right in the center, which of course is going to be our cow. So we'll click use this design. And the first thing I'm going to do is resize this because I know it's not going to be the correct size that I want, even though I'm probably going to download it as an SVG, which means I can scale it to any size I want. I'm still going to make it bigger just so it's more familiar to me. So I'm going to come over to the settings gear and find the dimensions here. I'm going to change this custom size. It was 1200 by 1200. I'm actually going to make it 4000 by 4000. And I'm not going to do my typical 4500 by 5400 t-shirt dimensions here because I know I'm going to use this for multiple products. And having a square aspect ratio for the actual file won't do anything to harm the usability on a t-shirt. It'll just make it a little bit easier to manage. And when we click confirm, that is going to make our canvas area much larger larger and make the design itself much smaller. So just click and drag to highlight all of your design elements and then drag it to fill out more of that space. All right, the first couple edits I'm going to make are going to be to prepare this design for having the cow graphic in the center. So I'm actually going to click and then use Control or Command G to ungroup all of the things that have been grouped here because I'm going to need to move around a lot of these individual elements. So now we're going to start getting rid of a couple things that I know I don't really want in the final design. All right, here's my progress so far. Now I'm actually going to take this uh, Merry Christmas text out. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to position it over the top. And I'm going to change the, the transformation here so that it is a curved on a circle path. There we go. And now we have our Mooey Christmas here. I don't want these snowflakes in here. I'm going to just put them temporarily inside the design area like that. Now we're going to come over to the left menu here and find our elements. And we are going to search for a cow. And Kittle has a few options here as far as elements for a cow. You can always upload your own custom one if you found just, you know, the perfect one on Creative Fabrica or Vexels or Pixabay somewhere else. But they have one here that I think is a great fit because it is exactly the shape that I was looking for. And it should fit nicely inside the area here. There we go. So I've got that cow face fitted right in here. I'm just going to update the colors so that they actually match. The light color, I want to match the light color of the rest of my uh, design. So just come down here to the document palette and select the one 
that fits the rest. There we go. Now this is looking pretty good, but of course we need the Santa hat. And first I'm just gonna move these little snowflake elements here. Now I happen to already have this Santa hat in my uploads file area on Kittle because I had, I have a whole collection of graphics that I've downloaded from Vexels and Creative Fabric over the last couple of years. And I knew I already had a Santa hat that would be perfect here. And then you may also want the hat to be behind the text layer. So if you want to do that, you can always bring that layer up. There we go, just like that. All right, now this entire thing actually is not really centered or sized correctly in here. So when we're all done, we're going to come in here and do this control G to group. And now we can reposition this a little bit. We can kind of maximize the size of the design in the print area. And we can use the centering option over here on the right side of the menu to center the whole thing. And that's what it looks like without the background. Now the black outline around the cow is the only thing that's got a solid outline. That's going to be okay because we're going to use this for the black color of a t-shirt and a sweatshirt. We're also going to use it on a black mug. So the black outline is fine. However, we're going to create a duplicate of this project and then change the outline of the cow. But before we do that, let's talk about the texture. Now one awesome thing that Kittle has enabled recently is the ability for you to clip your texture to your design so it no longer covers the entire uh, transparent area of a PNG file. Now, when we unhide the texture layer, you'll see the texture applies not only to the area within the design, but it also applies to the whole background. However, when we use the clip content toggle switch here, the texture is now removed from the transparent areas and only applies to your design, which is exactly what we need so that we can export this file and use it for print on demand. Now, I'm just going to edit this last little bit of text here. Another little cow pun underneath here, season of utter joy. Just thought that was another humorous touch to throw in there. And now we're all set. Now we can download this design to use on our t-shirt, our black t-shirt, and on a black mug. So we'll get rid of the background. We'll come up here to our download options menu. I'm going to change this to 300 DPI just to be safe. We'll have to put this back to 4,000 by 4,000. I also select to remove background just in case. And I like to download it as an SVG because I can use it on any size final product without having to worry about quality. However, if you're going to use a mock-up tool like Placeit, keep in mind you can only use PNGs. You can't use vector graphics with a lot of those mock-up tools. So you might also want to grab it as a PNG while you're here. All right, so now we're over in Printify. I've decided I wanted to sell this design on a Bella Canvas t-shirt, and I want to do black, heather green, and heather red. And we've got our print file here on our black t-shirt, and it's looking pretty nice, so I will size it the way I like, and then we'll take a look at the preview. And I think that looks pretty nice. That's almost exactly the way I had it pictured in my head. I think that's a nice different design than what we saw in the search results. It's got more of that like vintagey feel to it. However, one downside to using that black outline, remember I pointed out before, is that on our other colors, on the green and on the red colors, the black outline of the cow shape really kind of stands out in not a great way. It's just really noticeable that it doesn't really match the rest of the design once you see it on the red and the green. So what can we do? about that. Well, we don't want to make the black line areas the same color as this beige background because that would just make it a solid silhouette shape and you wouldn't see any of those details. But what we can do is make the black outline a darker shade of the color of the shirt and that would look a little bit more like it does on the black shirt. If we want to preserve this print file the way this actually was, let me just rename it here. And now what we can do is come in here into our projects view on our left menu. So we can go to our most recent project, the one we just saved here, and then we can click on the duplicate option. And it will then create a copy of it right next to it, actually to the right of it. So click on that and that will open up the copy. Now what we can do is change the name of this one and change the outline color to the one that we wanted. And then in Printify, we'll come back to the edit view. And what we'll do is come to the red option first here and we will select make a specific design for Heather Red. We'll select that. Now any edits we make will not apply to the green or the black color. So we'll delete this original print file, then we will upload the one with the red outline. And now here's how that looks. So we just need to make sure that we size it to size and position it to match the original black one. So you can always come back to the black one and look, okay, it was 13.74 and it was positioned from top zero. So if we come back to the red one here, we can make this 13.74 position from, oops, 13.74 position from top zero, and then we'll use the centering option to center it. And here's how that looks. I personally prefer the look of this 
this to the black outline. I think it just blends in a little bit better, still stands out, but it looks a little bit nicer on the red background in my opinion. And then we do the same thing for our green option. We click that make a specific design and then we delete the original and upload the green one. And there we go. Now we've got our green option done as well. And we're finished with the t-shirt. Now we can move on and use this design on some additional products. One such product being a Christmas ornament. This is a great example of a design that I think would go well on a Christmas ornament. You can always validate by taking a look at the search volume for the same phrase with ornament instead of shirt on there. I didn't do that for this one because I just think that it's a kind of a natural fit for an ornament and it only takes a couple minutes to make an ornament listing. So I'm just gonna go ahead and add one to my shop. And for this one, I chose the metal ornament made by Pick the Gift because one of the things I like about this is when you add a background color to the the uh, ornament, it actually colors both sides, not just one side. So I'm going to go ahead and position this so that is mostly within the print area here. And then we will go ahead and use our copy feature, which is over here on the right side of our screen. We can now use this little triple copy button here to apply this exact positioning and print file to all print areas because this one has a front and a back. So in just a couple minutes, I already have this design on another product. I can go ahead and reuse my title, my tags, my description, just change the word shirt to the word ornament in a few places. And of course, I would still use my research tool to make sure that I'm using tags that apply and are not, you know, tags that I would only use on a t-shirt. But otherwise, this is a pretty quick way to use the exact same design without having to resize it or change print files, get it on another product. Lastly, let's take a look at putting this design on a black mug. I'm doing a black mug because most of that design is that kind of light tan beige color and that just wouldn't look good on white and I don't really want to change that color on the design so I'm going to go with a black mug. However, we are going to run into a slight issue with this. I'm going to pull in my original SVG here from the black t-shirt. We're going to run into a slight issue with centering this design because when we bring over our design to the edge of the safe area, notice where the safe area is cutoff is and where the center line of the design is. Now this center line is actually a little bit more centered between the mug handle than the actual side of the mug compared to what, you know, the little estimate there shows you. If I actually want this center line to be on the left side of the mug, I want this center line to be on the left side of that line, not perfectly centered. And as you can see, it's on the right side of the line. So if we look at the preview of this, it's just not going to be centered on that side of the mug. So we need to squish it over without actually going outside of the safe area too much because we don't want it to get cut off. And this is where Kittle is really helpful and does something that Canva does not let you do. You can, of course, do this in Photoshop or Photopia, but you can also just do it right here in Kittle. So what we need to do is we need to take our final design and we need to change the aspect ratio, meaning we need to make it more narrow. We need to sort of squish it or pinch it. To do that, we need it to be one flat file. We can't have it still be all of these separate elements. So what we're going to actually have to do is open a new project and then and I'm going to upload the PNG of the finished design with the black outline. As soon as that uploads, just click on it to add it into your workboard. And then we're going to size it to fill up the print area. Now where the magic comes in here is you're going to go over to either the left or the right one of the bounding boxes, hold down the shift key and then click in drag in the opposite direction. So drag towards the center of the design and you will see it start to get more narrow. You just don't want to take it so far that it really looks strange. I think this should work pretty good so I'm going to size this up just a little bit more to fill out the vertical space. And now hopefully this works a little bit better. So let's size this up here. Now you'll see where that center line is falling is much closer to where the center of the actual design is. So it's okay to go a little bit outside that print area. In my experience, it usually doesn't get cut off if you do that. I just wouldn't push it all the way to the full bleed area. And there we go. Now we've got our design on a third product. And again, I can copy over my title most of my tags, my description, and just adjust them to include the word mug where it's appropriate and make sure that I'm not missing any opportunities for other tags that might be more specific to mugs. And of course, you can go even further with this one design as long as you see that there's search volume for different products. I would probably myself go with a sweatshirt for sure, but you could look even further into products like pillows or other decor, things like that. Let me know in the comments if you've been using Kittle to create your print-on-demand designs and how you're liking the workflows that Kittle allows you to have. I personally have been finding it very easy to use. I find it to be a little bit more of a time saver versus using Photoshop all the time, but it also has more versatility and features when it comes to editing compared to Canva. So I've been enjoying using it to create my fourth quarter print-on-demand designs this year. And I'm curious to know if any of you are finding it to be helpful for your design process as well. If you found this video helpful, do me a favor and hit that like button so YouTube can show 
show it to more people and subscribe to the POD Insights channel so you can be notified when I come out with future videos. Thank you so much to all viewers and all subscribers. I really appreciate your support. Hope you all have an awesome fourth quarter and absolutely crush it with sales in your print-on-demand shop. Thanks, everybody. See you next time.